uh would uh, one of you please lead in prayer submit this class into god's hands and then we can uh, begin our study okay anyone would uh, like to lead in prayer i'll pray yeah yeah please kennedy thanks I have been a father in Hova. We are very grateful to you for this opportunity that you've given us to come into your presence as a family in Hova. We thank you for everything. We thank you for who you are. We commit our teacher, Pastor Nancy, into thy hands. We are going to continue using her for your honor and glory. I also pray for our fellow students, wherever they are, as they join our status, whatever you have, I'm asking their peace for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Uh, so yesterday we did a survey of the New Testament to see what we can learn about the prophetic there. Um, today we will complete the last section in that chapter. So chapter three, we left uh, one portion, which is about the prophetic presbytery. So this is also seen in the New Testament where you have leaders coming and laying hands on those who are being, you know, uh, I, I would say people that they are guiding, leading. Uh, so mentors uh, basically lay hands on these people and commission them for the work of the ministry. When this is done, we see that there is an impartation uh, there is uh, an activation uh, of the gifts which God has, um, uh, you know, put inside uh, those those people. So this is no this is a, a common practice in the New Testament, and this is something that we can do even today. We may not see a lot of this happening currently, but this is a New Testament practice. So uh, when you look at what Paul writes to Timothy, he says in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So notice there, through prayer, Paul and the leadership had imparted okay, gifts um, into Timothy. And during this commissioning, uh, you know, cert certain certain things were activated and put into Timothy. This is a spiritual, um, uh, you know, like a spiritual dynamic, which we we may not completely be able to describe, but it happens. Okay, so Paul was just telling Timothy, there are gifts inside of you which you receive during this time of prayer, and when. Uh, because it is in you, don't neglect those gifts. You know, fan them into flame, put them into use, um, uh, be led into the purposes of God through these gifts which are in you. Similar thing is seen in Acts 13 when the leadership at the Church of Antioch commissioned Paul and Barnabas to go into the missionary journey. So, uh, uh, I am not sure how many of you uh, know at APC Bible College as well, uh, generally during the graduation, just before the graduation, we have uh, a couple of, um, uh, you know, activities. There is one one meeting that we have where I know it's a time of um, uh, um, sharing. Generally, the students share their experience. Now that we're not having the in-person classes, uh, you know, it hasn't happened for the last uh, two years. Uh, and I don't know, like about this year as well, the graduating batch, whether they can come here physically and whether we can have these sessions. But we generally have that time. And it's a, it's a, a pretty extended time. So the students share their learning, their experience. And uh, towards the end of the session, we have a time of 
prayer commissioning impartation where we had the faculty come we um, gather around the students and um, all the faculty we go we pray over the students we lay hands as the lord uh, leads us this is prophetic presbytery okay presbytery uh, is nothing but you know like a, a godly leadership so uh, we impart we impart what god has put on our lives upon the lives of the uh, students so that they can carry on the work of god the way god has called them now remember from what we have learned about the transfer of the anointing uh, we don't we don't just conclude that people will be replicas of other individuals and other ministries it doesn't work like that we've already understood that whenever we talk about impartation the anointing which is imparted upon the life of an individual that anointing is connected to the life goal and purpose of that individual so you know what what kind of anointing is imparted into people you know all that it's it's very hard to uh, answer but what we recognize is whatever that person needs okay um, uh, whether it's leadership whether it's uh, teaching so god does the work and we know that god is the one who anoints people so we just believe that we believe okay in the new testament we've seen that happen prophetic presbytery where leaders lay hands uh, to pray to bless to commission there is an impartation right and activation so we believe that and by faith we continue to do it and uh, you know god continues to do his work of anointing people you know suitably and leading them forward in their work in their ministry so um uh, shri kumar i see your hand raised any question with regard to this yes prophet i just want to know yeah. oh, sorry yes pastor i just want yeah, to know no uh, is it the same uh, what we call the ordination or is any is it anything different like as you said uh, uh, we impart the gifts so uh, is it uh, when we say we impart the gift is it then is it based on the call of that particular individual or is it the desire of the one who, of the leader who is praying for him or and the second question is is both are same the ordination and um, and uh, this uh, the prophetic uh, uh, presbytery is is both are same only i just want to know thank you pastor okay yeah uh, yes thank you shri kumar uh, now when we talk about ordination uh, my understanding of ordination let me just uh, look it up as well okay uh, so you see ordination is also positioning someone for the work of the ministry let's say as a pastor or a leader generally the term ordination is used but when we talk about prophetic presbytery uh, this need not be ordination you know it could just be um, a time of impartation that's it now the prophetic presbytery can accompany uh, ordination where we are we are commissioning people very specifically as the lord leads of course the holy spirit is the one who leads and guides based on what each person's calling is so the prophetic presbytery can accompany ordination but as far as i understand um a prophetic presbytery is you know it's it's more of a, a general thing like we just pray we we bless and we let the holy spirit work thank you pastor yeah yeah sure yeah thank you so uh this is prophetic presbytery some of you may be familiar with it uh, others may not but i um just want to share that we we also uh, try and do this for our uh, students before they graduate okay it's because we do believe in it we do believe that god works by his uh, spirit when we pray in faith okay over the people whom we are uh, building up in the lord so now we move on to chapter 4 uh, if uh, there are no questions from uh, chapter 3 uh, you can always interrupt me if at all something arises and then you want to uh, clarify it but let's continue chapter 4 chapter 4 is about the prophetic word okay and uh, uh, when we talk about the prophetic word it's a message that we are really talking about this prophetic word 
can be released in different ways uh, and we we will discuss that a little later so basically it's a message from god okay uh, however when we consider the prophetic and we consider uh, what god is doing in the now there's not just the prophetic word but the prophetic can play out in different ways so one is to say or to give the message that god is giving us that would be the prophetic word there can also be prophetic prophetic intercession i know there is a slight overlap uh, over here with our prayer and intercession class that we did in the first year so some of those insights uh, uh, you you would find that you know that they are repeated but you know we'll we'll try and go over them quickly so prophetic intercession is also something that uh, is is part of the prophetic ministry so basically this means that one prays through what uh, they hear from god so prophetic intercession there is something called as prophetic power prophetic power is the demonstration of god's power um you know when when god is ministering in this realm we'll we'll touch on the more specific details and then you, know, you will have a better understanding prophetic power for now we understand that it is the demonstration of power that accompanies the release of the prophetic then there's prophetic song now we are going to study this as well in depth song um hearing from god and singing the praise the praises of god you know uh, worship unto god and also the accompanying music that can be a prophetic release it need not just be a time of singing but it can be a prophetic release so the prophetic could come through in this manner in the form of prophetic song and then there is the prophetic action prophetic action is when uh, something is enacted okay and in the old testament we said that you know a lot of the prophecies were demonstrated creatively so uh, for and also in the new testament i think i shared the example of agabus he takes paul's belt and he ties it around his waist he could have said paul you are going to go through a difficult time and you shall be imprisoned instead there was an action a prophetic act that he performed so uh, it can come through in the manner of a of an action today uh, we will touch on the prophetic word and uh, learn about it and eventually we will you know touch all the other methods in which the prophetic is released now once again you know whenever we come across these classifications in the last class we classified the gifts of the spirit in a category revelatory gifts uh, it's not to limit our understanding you know god is very out of the box the way he works we might think he only two gifts will flow together but it's not necessary right even what i shared just now about the way the message comes through maybe when the release of the prophetic happens uh, you begin by saying the prophetic word but eventually it goes into a prophetic song and then maybe an action a prophetic action so it's it's hard to classify and be very technical about these matters we just have to let the spirit flow but all this categorization is only for a better understanding and clarity for us okay now talking about the prophetic word uh, we have uh, repeated regarding first corinthians 14:3 um, uh, quite often you know so far and we've said that the prophetic word brings edification exhortation and comfort so this basic thing about the prophetic word needs to be understood now we are not saying that there will be no words of warning or no words of judgment you know god does uh, communicate these things to his people because he wants everyone to align 
to his purposes. But you know, primarily what we are saying is when one flows in the basic gift of uh, prophecy, the simple gift of prophecy that accomplishes edification, exhortation, and comfort. Uh, and you know, when we go to the part where we talk about you know how how do you prophesy? How do you perceive if a word is from the Lord? We would then also say that uh, if one is a prophesying believer you know we're just getting started with with uh, hearing from god and releasing god's word um, it, it's better to if at all we get a word which is outside of this zone of edification exhortation and comfort so there's a lot of uh, confirmation required before that word is actually released because you see every word which we release, we have to take responsibility for it. Now, I do understand that as we grow in the prophetic, uh, there can be times where we slightly uh, miss the exact message because of our interpretation. But the key is, yeah, that could happen. But as an individual who is prophesying, I have to take full responsibility for what I'm saying, because someone might act on that word. Now, if someone else is also um, well-versed in uh, the understanding of the prophetic, they will know that, hey, I need to test every uh, prophetic word. But otherwise, in general, you know, someone who hears the prophetic word, and many a time, uh, people also put the prophetic word in such a way that it's hard to reject it. You know, if someone says, thus says the Lord, uh, a person who's listening to that, who doesn't have a deep understanding of the prophetic might be like, okay, I need to do this. Now, what if that was not an accurate word from God and this person acts on it, right? So we'll come to that. You really need a confirmation if a word is seemingly outside of this realm of edification exhortation and comfort but this is the main and primary um, uh, intention of the prophetic word and we see that in first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3 so every time we hear prophecy you know, immediately first corinthians 14 3 should come to our minds uh, a prophetic word is for edification exhortation and comfort to men and yesterday i um, kind of touched on what each one of these mean edify means to build someone up so when the message comes it's really strengthening and building up uh, people exhort uh, comes from the term paraclesis uh, which means calling to one side okay again it's it's a word of encouragement as if uh, you you want to be there for them. So that is what uh, exhortation means. And we said comfort. Comfort is a little deeper than uh, encouragement. It comes from the word paramutia, uh, which is translated speaking closely to anyone. Now, again, uh, this is to bring, to console someone uh, and as if you know, you're speaking tenderly to them. Now, as you look at the the uh, three major things that a prophetic word does uh, if you look at it closely you you would understand that the exhortation part the exhortation part uh, is prospective meaning one can be encouraged regarding the future one can one can um, be given hope for the future so exhortation brings that kind of hope when people look at the future. Now, when we talk about comfort, generally, generally, it may have to do with the past in their lives. You know, there could have been a loss, there could have been uh, a failure, there could have been, you know, something the individual has gone through and uh, the comforting word really binds them up and we, we, uh, recognize that it's more retrospective retrospective meaning looking back at the trials that one has experienced uh, so on and so forth so uh, this is the primary work of the simple gift of prophecy now the prophetic word let's look at what the other um, uh, 
aspects of the prophetic word are what is it that the prophetic word can accomplish what is it that the prophetic word brings to us as a revelation so when we look at the prophetic word uh, and we've touched on you know, some of these examples earlier as well prophetic word can reveal one's true character and potential now this may have happened in uh, your own experience when somebody has prayed and said early on in in our in our lives and said oh so and so this is what the lord is going to do in your life i see that you are and you know they might have said you are a pillar of strength or you are um, an encourager i see god's healing touch on your hands god is going to use you mightily in the healing ministry and then lo and behold as years pass by and you are walking with the lord that's the direction in which god is taking you so how did these people discern your character your potential your destiny you know when nothing was apparent through the prophetic okay and this is uh, the release of the prophetic word over our lives even in scripture i gave us the example of nathaniel when jesus looked at nathaniel he could see the character or the build up or the make up of this individual and he could tell okay here is a good person here is a, a person of integrity there is a person without any guile that's what uh, jesus told about him so today we uh, we're not going to go into the depths of this uh, but i would also recommend that you read uh, an apc publication called gifts of the spirit okay? gifts of the spirit which uh, goes into details on the gift of prophecy and also the discerning of spirits because it's very practical as we are living our lives uh, and having our interactions you know even without interacting uh, sometimes i'm not saying all times this is not a gift to judge people you know prematurely that's not what this is but there are times when god could give us a witness in our spirit about an individual and say yes this is a good person you can partner with them in the ministry or you can you know uh, do this or that or the other way around where you have a sense that uh, okay i'm not sure whether i can Know, go forward uh, with a business deal or a partnership or something like that so the prophetic word can really reveal the character of an individual now the prophetic word can also as i shared reveal the potential of a of an individual so someone maybe they're going through a very uh, rough patch and uh, uh, they don't know what can be accomplished through their lives but a prophetic word is like you know patting them on the back uh, and uh, giving them that strength to look ahead because god is going to do great things with their life so you know gideon gideon is a great example here he was um, uh, under the terebinth tree and he was just sitting there and wondering why so many disasters why uh, you know why are we being oppressed uh, by our enemies continuously and that's what he was thinking about he never knew what he can accomplish through his life and that's when the angel showed up and said mighty man of valor so speaking the potential over an individual it's only god who knows so god speaks that over our lives you know peter is another example if you study the life of peter in the gospels you would think don't trust this person you know he can't make up his mind he can't be firm on his law you know his commitment to uh, the master but jesus knew and early on jesus said you are simon the son of jonah you shall be called cephas which is translated a stone okay so jesus knew the potential and surely enough in the uh, during the early church age you see peter rise up without anyone trying to tell him peter you need to take up leadership no from acts 1 you see that he begins to speak up he makes the first sermon so there was something in him which he did not know about so the prophetic word can reveal one's potential now how does this help in the the ministry in the church what can happen is when there is uh, an awakening of the genuine prophetic just imagine you know in a in a church setting 
when uh, we as leaders, uh, as pastors, when we pray for people, people are sitting on the sidelines. They don't even know what potential they have. But when you begin to call out, okay, people's uh, character, potential, encouraging them, strengthening them, showing them the way forward. And of course, we need God's wisdom uh, for this, to minister this uh, in an appropriate way. But when this begins to happen, you will see the church are rising because people are able to see what God sees about them. Okay, So it's as if blinders are taken off of people and uh, they have the motivation to um, accomplish the purposes of God. So that's how the prophetic word really awakens one uh, to the character and the potential of individuals or themselves. Now, moving forward, the prophetic word brings a revelation of God's plans and purposes. You know, the Holy Spirit uh, is the one who releases the gift of prophecy, isn't it? So the gifts of the Spirit are from whom? They are from one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of revelation and understanding. He is the Spirit who leads us. And that is why Paul wrote in the book of Romans, Romans 8, 14, that we must be led by the Holy Spirit, okay? led by the work of the Holy Spirit, the, the revelation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the Holy Spirit is the one uh, who reveals the mind of God. Okay. What does God want done through my life? Uh, how does God want to lead me in this season of my life? I need to depend on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, you know, through the inner witness, it brings that uh, revelation, confirmation uh, to our spirits. And then you know, there is direction for us. Also, you know, when we talk about the prophetic word uh, revealing the plans and purposes of God, we must recognize uh, that the word of God is our primary source of direction because the word of God covers everything. You know, as you study 2 Timothy 3 uh, verses 16, 17, there's, there's word in there for our correction, for, you know, a reproof, for rebuke, for everything. It is already there in the, God, the word of God logos. Okay. However, the Holy Spirit he knows how to bring the word alive to us, how to give us, he gives us the wisdom to apply the word in our lives. So the prophetic word brought about by the Holy Spirit, you know, in general, we are led by the Spirit. And how does the Holy Spirit lead us? With the help of God's word. But the prophetic word, you can consider it as a bonus. Okay. Over and above, in addition to. So the prophetic word as a guide to the plans and purposes of God is a bonus for us, giving us direction. Uh, now, the good example is that of Paul. I told us that uh, uh, Paul already knew God had confirmed it in his spirit that he is going to be imprisoned and undergo trial. But as you see the journey of Paul, you know, first he communicates it to the Ephesian leaders. But as he journeys along, you have different believers telling him, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Jerusalem. You now you have uh, uh, Agabus coming in again, reconfirming it. So it was not just Agabus. You had two or three incidents that reconfirmed what Paul already knew. So it was, it was not that Paul was waiting on Agabus to, to reveal a prophetic word. No, God had already led him by the Holy Spirit, but there was a confirmation that came through the Holy Spirit. So the prophetic word, uh, it would be good to uh, take it as a confirmation, but to be primarily led by the word of God and the witness of the Holy Spirit. Now, another way in which, you know, this, this prophetic word for one's purpose um, and, you know, God's plans over somebody's life is seen in scripture is when Zacharias, he speaks over his own son, John the Baptist. So filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, how wonderful, isn't it? That a parent uh, 
is given the revelation about the life of the child before the child lives you know a few days or weeks the parent knows through the holy spirit what direction god is going to take this child in so zacharias prophesies o- o- over him he says and you child will be called the prophet of the highest for you will go before the face of the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our god with which the day spring from on high has visited us and you know this is in luke chapter 1 Uh, verses sixty-seven and then seventy-six through seventy-nine. But when you hear this, you wonder, how can a mortal man have this kind of insight? Not just about John the Baptist, but you notice there, he says to give now knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. He's talking about Jesus, the work of the cross. and the work of salvation so tremendous insight and it's not possible to have this kind of insight through normal human uh, you know mind and and logic so we see here that god can reveal the plans and purposes that he has for someone uh, through the holy spirit and uh, uh, as we've said you know depend on the word of god for uh, our specific specific purpose as well because there is a general purpose of god for all of us and then there is a specific purpose the specific purpose will reveal whether one will go into um uh, you know uh, let's say ministry uh, full time ministry part time ministry or go into business go into the field of arts media entertainment technology so how do we get the specific because in uh, the the bible you don't have those specifics which says thou shalt you know uh, study java program you don't then what should i do as an individual there is the general instruction of god but even as you study the general instruction of god you know okay i need to walk in the path of righteousness i need to uh, have all these principles for the right kind of uh, uh, you know workplace you know workplace ministry so you're walking in all of that and then the holy spirit brings revelation he brings revelation about okay i want you to move in this certain direction somebody comes to you and says uh, we have this uh, opportunity will you take it up the inner witness of the holy spirit guides us right so we we sense peace and we do all our calculations and we know hey god is leading me i must take up this opportunity now over and above if there is a prophetic word sometimes there is okay then it's an additional confirmation uh in my own life i remember this was a youth camp and uh, in the camp uh, you know we had these times of worship and all that was going on and towards the end people were laying hands on one another they were praying uh, and at that point in my life i was really trusting god for my uh, post graduate education and i wanted to know you know where god is going to lead me uh and during that time one auntie she came she started praying and then she started prophesying you know i i did hope in my life that i i would do a certain course i would go abroad and all that but um you know i wasn't keen on doing it right away it was a plan uh, some sometime in my life i i will do that so she came and she started praying and she started saying specific things i can see you uh, you know with a uh the kind of bags that you have uh, you know th- those trolley bags uh, in the airport so she started prophesying what she was seeing i see you taking the bag and this and that so i was like yeah okay we'll see uh, you know i just kept it in my heart and i prayed about it and i was like lord we'll we'll see because it is a desire it is a plan but not right away but you know certain things happened in my life that it almost immediately transpired it happened it happened and then It, when i was doing my course um uh, you know and i had traveled i had traveled abroad and i was doing my course there one day i uh, remembered oh my goodness you know this person had said all these things it's ha- actually happened like that uh but it was a confirmation it was a confirmation so i didn't wait for a prophetic word to make a decision and similarly i know of a lot of people who don't wait for a prophetic word if god moves us on our hearts uh, and you're fine that hey this is in the word of god this is the witness of the holy spirit in my heart go for it 
you know uh, with the wisdom that you have step into it sometimes okay only sometimes there are prophetic words and that helps us it gives us that additional um, strength to make the move so the point i'm making is don't sit around for a prophetic word if god chooses to reveal it then there is an there is a reason why he does that okay and uh, that brings the extra strength we need to step into it now this could be because you know what we are doing needs greater affirmation okay maybe we, sometimes we might doubt ourselves is this me is god leading me in this way god knows and you know he is gracious enough to give us that additional confirmation and strength to move in a certain direction okay so that's about uh, uh, revealing the plans and purposes of god through the prophetic word now the prophetic word the next um, aspect here is prophetic word stirs up and causes a release of faith uh, we see this in the life of uh, uh, elijah when he's ministering to the widow woman in zarephath uh, god tells him you know gives him a word so elijah comes to her and uh, you know in, in her difficult times uh, the word that he releases is thus says the lord god of israel the bin of flour shall not be used up nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the lord sends rain on the earth in first kings 17 that brings faith in that woman's life and you know strengthens her to go on similarly elisha we see him ministering to a, a, a desperate family the shunamite woman where uh, you know her husband has died and she is uh, worried about debts uh, and at that time the prophetic word comes through elisha and the word encourages the family and she does you know there's faith in her heart oh okay if god is going to solve my problem i will do what the prophet is telling me to do so she goes gets those jars fills them up with oil and you know the oil begins to overflow she sells it and uh, makes you know lives out of what she gets there so the prophetic word can actually build faith in a person's heart uh, and uh, we know that once there is faith then you know god that's an opportunity for god to work and uh, uh god can do miracles the prophetic word also provides motivation and strength to carry out the plans and purposes of god now the example here in our notes is that of the building of the church now uh, building of the temple at jerusalem we understand that they went through a hard time Okay. uh and uh, uh, the rebuilding work of the temple um was stalled for about 16 years and that's when god raised up two prophets hagai and zechariah and we see like even in the book of um, in the book of ezra we read about this so god raises up these two prophets hagai and zechariah and they begin to prophesy they begin to prophesy um at that time zerubbabel zerubbabel was was uh, in charge they they strengthened him with the prophetic words and say that come on you know you're going to do this you're going to complete it and that strength comes back you know sometimes we need that encouragement to carry on with the purposes of god and complete it and we might lack the motivation but the prophetic word can bring the motivation back into our lives and so you know god works through it uh, the next thing here is that the prophetic word releases god's power in isaiah 44 verse 26 we've seen um, the word says that god confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers so once the word has been spoken you know, that god is going to uh, bring light in your darkness god is going to open a door it it might seem like uh you know an impossible thing but sometimes it takes the prophetic word to release god's power unless that is spoken you know that uh, whatever god is going to do you know that that power is not released but once the word is spoken something begins to take place 
right in the prophetic realm and things are a set in order things are set in motion uh, and so there is a release of the prophetic power through the prophetic word of god and even this can take place uh, and that's why the prophetic word is so important and we know that you know god is someone who performs uh, uh, the word which he has spoken so if there's a genuine word from god and god is saying i'm going to open doors for you and you're wondering how is it possible the prophetic word you know god waits on that prophetic word uh, and he will make sure that it is fulfilled so i i have i have a, a pastor friend of mine he always used to say in the beginning when we were all flowing in the prophetic and uh, you know we had our own challenges and questions hey really you know i said this i i don't even know how i said it uh, it came to me for this particular person and then you know i just happened to share this word i don't know uh, how such a thing can take place in their life so he used to tell he used to tell us and he used to tell me also don't worry it's god's responsibility you did your part to discern the prophetic word well enough uh, and to be careful to release the right prophetic word beyond that you know to fulfill that word in that person's life leave it on the lord god takes charge to fulfill the word that he has spoken so you know in a way it's a partnership with god we do our part hear from god release that genuine word as accurately as possible and then you know he takes over he has to do the rest otherwise uh, you know we we really can't we can't make anything happen in people's lives okay so the prophetic word releases god's power and god works with that word in people's lives then uh, the prophetic word brings correction and restoration uh, while we're talking about prophecy i remember i began today by saying that yes the the uh, the simple gift is to bring that kind of strength uh, and encouragement to people but when there is a need for correction god knows god knows what uh, he, you know each person's life is like and if they need correction and restoration for them to realign themselves to god then the the prophetic word can bring that as well you know uh, and uh, the good example that uh, we talked about earlier was the way nathan communicated to david so uh, correction was brought to david you know he had sinned against god sinned uh, with uh, bathsheba he had killed uh, bathsheba's husband and god knew everything god knew everything and uh, david thought he can cover it up but the prophetic word actually exposed david's sin but the good part is david responded in the right way and he said okay god you know i repent of this and therefore restoration was possible in david's life so god can bring correction and restoration through the prophetic word prophetic word can cause conviction repentance and turning to god so a good example is when paul you know writes to the corinthian church and he says look if everyone prophesies and if there's someone coming into the church who doesn't know god now that person will be convicted that person will uh, wonder how do these people know all these things about me there is a god right so conviction will come upon the unbeliever then uh, repentance will come upon the unbeliever and uh, that person will uh, turn to god jesus also uh, through the prophetic word you know moved in this the woman at the well in john chapter 4 is a good example when jesus went to her in, in samaria and started you know telling her things about her life and she's wondering how does this man know so jesus told her whatever she said yeah i don't have a husband you're right you don't have a husband you know you you've uh, been you've been with uh, you know these uh, men and even right now the person that you are with you're not married so so many things that jesus knew about this woman what was the result of that he didn't say to put her down he didn't say to condemn her but ultimately it led to conviction repentance and the wondrous thing that happened is not only did she turn to uh, uh, god and you know to christ uh, the lord jesus but she went and told her whole village i have seen somebody who told me everything about me you know you come you uh, meet this man so it brings repentance and conviction 
the prophetic word of course brings transformation of nations no wonder we've had all these prophets these mighty prophets of god prophesying over nations uh, you have your jeremiah isaiah uh, uh, right uh, ezekiel people like this prophesying over nations and the prophetic word causes the purpose of God to be accomplished over that nation. Now, beautiful uh, passage is from Jeremiah 1, verses 9 and 10, where God tells Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah that the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Now, Jeremiah says this, um, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. How is all this going to happen? The building, the planting, the rooting out, the pulling down through the word, the prophetic word of the, uh, from the mouth of the prophet. And, you know, if you recall, Ezekiel, he prophesies to an army of dry bones, to the nation. He is prophesying to a nation that you're dead, you're seemingly dead, but you will rise up. And through that prophetic word you know, comes the release of the prophetic power and the work that God wants to do in that nation or the community. So the prophetic word can work and transform nations. And finally, the prophetic word you know, helps us in warfare. Uh, Paul told Timothy, in 1 Timothy 1.18, uh, I charge, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Sometimes we have these prophetic words and uh, the current circumstance in life seems like you're never going to make it. But you have the prophetic word. God is telling you, one day, this is what you will be flowing in. So, Right now in this season, when I don't see anything happen, I can use the prophetic word in spiritual warfare. So when I'm praying, I say the word and I say, God, but you said this, this and this. So what does that become? It becomes my weapon. The prophetic word becomes my weapon. We begin to use it and we say, Lord, but you said you're going to do this in my life. Right? Uh, and so the prophetic word can be used in warfare. I know I can't, kind of went a little fast on uh, these insights but uh, if you have any qu quick questions we have two minutes we could take it up uh, and uh, we can wrap up this class for today yes yes Shrikumar, please uh, pastor i want uh, yeah. i want to know um, as you said uh, the word which is spoken through the prophet and uh, god brings it brings it or god performs it yeah. So I just, I, I uh, you know, I heard so many prophecies where it, uh, you know, they maybe um, uh, like they are, they release the word, but it never come to pass. Like, so in that case, uh, is it the problem of the one who receive it or, uh, or is the one who, the prophet, the man who is ministering, he heard it in a wrong way. And second question is that, uh, as you said, one line that uh, if, when you prophesy, you should take the responsibility of your word. So yeah. what do you mean by that, actually? See, if I am praying for someone, if I release a word, so how can I, I should be responsible for that? Thank you, Pastor. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you, uh, Shrikumar. So uh, I'll answer it in the shortest way that I can. So the answer to your first question is every prophetic word is conditional. Okay, so it will not automatically happen. Uh, and we will touch on that in, in depth soon so i hope for now you're uh, uh, happy with that answer yes, it's conditional. Yes. okay yeah it's conditional now coming to the second question that you have which is person takes responsibility see we will talk about the character of the prophet because the anointing is the wine but the character is the wine skin so if i don't have i mean i have to do my best to have integrity in what I'm saying. See, because interpretation is my responsibility. Did I really hear from God? Is this my flesh? Is this my spirit? Uh, is this in line with what God's word? See, all that processing, no? That is my responsibility. So that's what I mean. Again, we will get into the depths of it soon. How and what uh, goes into the processing. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, sure.
Okay, so I think these are the fastest answers I've ever given in my life. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, this um, is this is a very you know, lively subject. So please do go back, read your notes, and uh, let's come back next week and study more. Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Anyone, uh, could you please pray and close, please? Uh, I'll pray. Yes, Father, yes, thank yes. you, Lord. Uh, thank you for what you've been teaching us. Father, we pray that uh, as we become your mouthpiece, we pray that uh, we get to uh, hear from you and uh, uh, be that channel of blessing to others, uh, exhorting, edifying, and comforting uh, each other, and that we get to uh, only share what we hear from you, Father. We pray that as we teach, uh, let it be your spirit that uh, surrounds us and helps us to learn in the right direction. We, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tarun. And uh, have a good day, everyone. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. God bless.